Let me do some different things here today. Hi, I'm Johnny Mac with your daily comedy news. If you listen to Thursday's pod, you heard me get the giggles, and at the end, I kicked two stories. So I'm going to pull those up to the front here and just mix it up instead of leading with the headliners. Let me lead with the back end stuff today. If you're a new listener, Pick a different episode. If you listen every day, you know my vibe. But here's some stuff that I wanted to get to and didn't get to during the week. From the LA Times, as a stand-up comedian with cerebral palsy, he uses a wheelchair. Joe Urell might have the hardest profession when it comes to being a person with disability. When it comes to telling jokes, he sees his unique traits as a way to lift himself above the crowd. I love the writing here. First joke. I don't want people to feel bad for me because I'm in a wheelchair. Because if I wasn't in a wheelchair, I'd be stealing cars. And I know that because I stole this wheelchair. Love it. Love the pause. Love the kicker. Awesome. Next one. I was born in Cocoa Beach, Florida. When I was 10, my birth family put me in foster care. I was adopted by a family in Huntington Beach when I was 12. My mom adopted 60 kids with her nonprofit. Kind of a hoarding problem. From Yahoo, comedian Jeannie Godley has vowed to, quote, go out with a bang. She's 61 and was diagnosed with stage 3 ovarian cancer. She's refused to cancel her tour of Scotland after her cancer returned. She told TV's Lorraine, on the very first day I got chemotherapy, and I go straight from the cancer clinic in Glasgow, straight into the tour van and straight on stage. I genuinely can't wait to see people have a laugh and talk about something that isn't the symptoms of cancer. I want to be able to have a laugh, and I'm excited. Ovarian stage 3 cancer is treatable, but it's not curable. It never goes away, and it's always there. It's always going to come back, and I'm always going to have to keep fighting it. I don't know how long I've got, but like a mayfly, I'm going to enjoy it while I can. I'm going to go on tour, and if I'm going to go out, I'm going to go out with a bang. I love your attitude, Jeannie. Best of luck to you. From MySanAntonio.com, HBO posted a TikTok of comedian Ralph Barbosa. He was born and raised in Dallas. Barbosa explained that he doesn't really vibe with country music as most of his peers in Texas do. He said, it's not my thing, but my friends are like, nah, man, you don't like country because you haven't listened to George Strait. They're like, George Strait is one of the greatest of all time. He's from Texas. We're from Texas. He makes these badass songs. Barbosa says his friends played him straight song, Take Me to Texas. The joke, there's a lyric that says, take me to Texas 200 years ago. He then pauses and raises an eyebrow and says, I don't know, man. I could see how some people might like that song, but it's not for me. The full lyric by George Strait, Take me to Texas 200 years ago, where pride rose from the ashes of San Jacinto. It still beats in every heart. The reference, on April 21st, 1836, Sam Houston and some 800 Texans defeated Santa Ana's Mexican force of approximately 1,500 men at the Battle of San Jacinto, shouting, Remember the Alamo! Barbosa's joke got 4.8 million views, more than 511,000 likes. Many people in the comments are defending George Strait, saying he's a legend who loved Mexico. Catpad1389 said, George loves Mexico. He embraces the whole culture. Kamel Nanjiani said he only got in a stand-up because he wanted to write jokes. He said, it was a necessary evil. I hardly performed before 9-11, and afterwards, things suddenly shifted. I found being on stage miserable. People felt okay yelling racist stuff at me, and it kept throwing me. I had to pre-write specific comebacks to take control so I wouldn't lose the rest of the audience. Wow. He told Fast Company, I make jokes in real life often. I'm still a person who's trying to find the funny side of things for sure. When it comes to specific use of the comedy skills, like, say, stand-up, that does get rusty, and it's very rusty right now. If I got on stage right now, I don't know how it would go. I'd need a few sets to really get back on it. Will he return to stand-up? I haven't really done stand-up since February 2020. It's the single toughest challenge. It's the hardest thing. It's the thing that falls away first because everything else on the schedule in stand-up can be whenever you want it to be. In 2020, I was like, this will be the year I get back into stand-up, do a tour, and then suddenly the world changed, so I couldn't do it. But would I have done it for sure if we didn't have COVID? I can't say for sure. There were a few years where I was doing stand-up where I felt like, oh, I'm good at this. I recorded one special, referring to Beta Male, his special from 2013. I like the special. I'm proud of it. But I feel it's still not me at my best when I was doing my best stand-up. And I know it sounds a little arrogant, but I'm not at my best right now, so I feel okay saying that a previous version of me was good at something that I'm now rusty at. A few ways you can support the show. One, go to buymeacoffee.com slash news. Several options there. One thing you can do is you can join the $2 club and then once a month, 
buymeacoffee.com will ding your credit card and two dollars minus the service fee will make its way to me nice easy way to support the show i'll give you a shout on the show happy to do that uh you can throw five dollars in the tip jar on buymeacoffee.com slash daily comedy news i will take your money i'll go to the national donuts chain and i will buy one of these iced coffees do you hear it this one has about uh, i'd say 18 percent left and i'll probably buy a large iced coffee with caramel and milk Separate from that, you can become a premium subscriber on Apple Podcasts. If you go to the Apple Podcasts app and find this show, they'll put the option under your nose. What happens there is for five bucks a month, you'll get the episodes commercial free and early. What do I mean by early? Like as soon as I finish the edit, I just post it. So you'll get it the night before, if that makes any sense. And if you just want to try that for free or not hear any commercials for a month, the first month's free, and then after that, it's five bucks. So go for that. Much thanks to the members, including Mike in Cleveland, Gary Tellman, hello, Andrea, how you doing? Shannon, thank you, and Kenny, who's always trying to get me to switch coffee chains. How you doing, Kenny? Thank you all so much for supporting the show at buymeacoffee.com slash daily company news. Atsuko Atkaska. Boy, she's really popping, right? Like, people are into her. I can almost say her name correctly without having to check my phonetic spelling like I did last year, and that's not a joke. She was talking to the Hollywood Reporter about her grandmother and said, My grandma's going with the flow finally in life. She's been a caretaker most of her life. She still takes care of my mom most of the time. She's 87. She raised three kids on her own. She lost her husband when she was 28. Then she had to raise me when my mom couldn't. I started making silly videos to post online and make people feel really good. And that made me feel good. One day, Grandma was like, can I join you in one of the dances? It's her having fun for the first time and allowing herself to play, too. When I tell her things like, that video we did has 20 million views. All that to me sounds made up. I don't know how many zeros that is off the top of my head. I think any older person already has a hard time grasping what fame or exposure means. When we taped our special in New York, I got to fly her first class, and I think then she really saw, this is where comedy has taken you. I get to lay down flat. I'm eating beef. I get champagne. (laughs) The Hollywood Reporter said, you have such a unique style of delivery. She sure does, and I love it. Do you have any comic inspirations? Listen to this answer. I grew up watching Scooby-Doo. I feel like I'm sort of a cartoon character in the way that I express. I'm also a proud immigrant. I speak in weird cadences. I make weird noises with my mouth. I grew up watching Lucille Ball and Charlie Chaplin. Because I didn't know English, it had to be physical humor. Yeah, I was going to jump in there and be like, wait, Charlie Chaplin is influencing your stand-up? How does that work? But she clearly read the next sentence. John, calm down. Stop jumping to conclusions. And then when I finally got to know the language, the first person I saw stand-up was Margaret Cho. That was mind-blowing to realize all these things I was watching as comedy, which were more physical and cartoony, she's able to express in just words. I was like, oh, wow, that's its own art form. That was a pivotal moment for me when I realized stand-up comedy was a job. And then Tig Notaro was my other idol, too. Rory Scovel spoke to the Houston Press, gave a shout-out to someone he's admired from the sidelines for years, Bo Burnham. I also earlier today saw an article about Patton Oswalt really uh, waxing the car of Bo Burnham. Bo's got a lot of fans. Scoville called Bo Burnham a savant. He knows exactly what to do, and I barely even know how the set operates or what the language is. He somehow already completely knows and understands it. So to see him explode the way he has... I think Inside is one of the most genius things I've watched in the longest time from top to bottom. I just loved every element about it. Just to know it's so vulnerable and real and him is the best. I just love it. The genius that's coming out of that. I witnessed that forever ago, but now to see him at full control and know that he can really do it is really cool. It's really cool to see. And I don't know if he would take this as a compliment or an insult, but to see this awakening of his own, that he sees he can do this, make this version of the thing that I know how to make it, especially now because comedy specials are so oversaturated in the market. Yes, there's a new special every week. Yes, where people walk out on stage and say things. I've always found it to be more fun to be at the event, to feel the power and the fun of it. Not that we can always be at the events, but for Bo Burnham to make the version that it is, that version is the better version. You'd never want to be at that, and you couldn't. It's impossible. I just love the aspect of it. That's your comedy news for today. Follow the show for free on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your shows. See you tomorrow. Hello, I am Mark Francis, host of a daily podcast about the British royal family called Palace Intrigue. Did you see what Meghan Markle did in her latest documentary? Or what Prince Harry said in his new book? 
Well, the kings and queens and princes and princesses are ready to explode. Andrew is ready to implode. Royal sources are jumping at the bit. The in-laws just can't stop. The UK tabloids are about to burst. Americans can't get enough. The kids can't get any cuter. The press can't get any uglier. And Wills and Kate? Well, they're just wonderful. Get your daily dose of gossip and news from the world's most royal family. Follow Palace Intrigue on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or wherever you get your shows. 